What's going on my friends? DJ Lowstacks here. Welcome back or to the channel and welcome to another off-season video. So today what we're going to be doing, I'm headed out to the garage right now. One of the most suggested or requested videos from you guys is hands down a full tour of my booth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera around here. The booth is trashed right now. So it's it's right here under the cover and everything, uh, but it's destroyed. Uh, it's basically just, you know, pretty much an entire wedding season without cleaning it. The last wedding it got used for was my wedding. So just a bunch of crap in there. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna set the camera up on a tripod, do a little time lapse. I'm gonna clean the thing out and then we're gonna walk through the entire thing piece by piece and tell you exactly what's inside of it, all the gear, what I used, anything new that I'm gonna add this year, all that type of stuff. So let me throw the camera on a tripod and uh, we'll get this thing going. This thing was a mess. Uh, I got it nice and clean though. Cables were all wound up. Everything's picked up. Looks good. Wiped it all down. So let me flip the camera around and I'll show you guys everything we got in the booth. <clears throat> to clean it, actually we'll start over here. So to clean it up, I just use Windex uh, and a microfiber cloth. But a couple of the things that are in my booth, always. So right here, this is a kangaroo mat. So. This is a, I actually found out about this from Nick Spinelli, but it's just a memory foam mat uh, I stand on. This is actually the piece that goes down across the front of the booth when it's set up. So this is just some trim from Menards, uh, it's PVC, and I got these hinges on there, so it hinges. And the hinge, it seems like it's loose, but I actually kind of like that because if I'm on some unlevel ground, it helps kind of level things out and keeps it looking good. So I do need to replace some of the trim on this this winter. It's kind of banged up from travel. But this is a 65 inch Vizio TV. Peep the, uh, the white cracks in the reflection there. But that's a 65 inch Vizio behind some plexiglass. I can leave links to most of the stuff down in the description. Um, laptop stand. So this pole was a lot taller and I cut it down to length for that. <clears throat> So we just got quarter wave antennas here. Um, I do want to upgrade the antennas this winter and I'm probably going to move this to over here, I think, um, because those antennas are going to be a lot longer and they're going to get in the way of the laptop stand. So I'm probably going to be moving this to over there. I just need to get some longer uh, mic cables or antenna cables for that. But up here, um, you know, it's two rain 12s, same setup I had in my old booth. So uh, I can leave links to all this stuff down in the description. This is a little seven inch display monitor. What that does is it duplicates, basically it duplicates whatever's on my laptop onto this and then out onto the other screen. So whatever's, whatever's playing on that front screen is what's gonna be playing on this little screen so I know what's going on there. Uh, we got a white chroma cable. Um, probably could tidy up those wires back there a little bit with some zip ties. But over here, we got the sound switch control one with the white skin. This came from Tyler Wallace. So if you need a skin for anything, he can hook you up. Uh, these skins I got before I knew Tyler from 12 inch skins. So they work pretty good. I've had a little bit of issues with them sticking to these rain 12s. I think it's because a paint job on this is a little textured. So if you use some, some white gaff tape there to, to hold that on. But this is a rain 70. These are the Rain 12 Mark 1s. I do have a set of Mark 2s. They're actually in that booth right now, in that black booth. But uh, eventually I'll probably stick the Mark 2s in here. I just don't have white skins for them yet. So down here, so this thing right here, I'm gonna talk about this real quick. So this is actually a Swiffer duster. So I know some other people use like a soft bristle paintbrush to clean their stuff. I like this because it actually collects the dust rather than just throwing it around like a paintbrush would. So I can leave a link to this in the description too, but it's just a Swiffer duster. You can get it from Walmart or Amazon or whatever, but it works really nice. I like it because you can get in between your knobs and stuff without 
it spinning the knobs, you know what I mean? So none of your EQs or anything get messed up and it actually picks the dust up. So works super good for cleaning. I usually keep that down in this tote here. I got this tote down here below. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's a little dark. So down here, these are just my cables. So I've actually got the two stands that I got from Dimitri for my Asteras. Those are down there. Uh, I keep those in the booth. This is just a tote full of random stuff. We got gaff tape, extra XLRs, USB cables, just all that random stuff is in there. This is my PowerCon cable for power. And over here, that's my, if you can see that, that's my Astera box. So that's my Astera box. I just have that Velcroed there so it doesn't get lost and it's just always in the booth. So I don't have to worry about forgetting it or anything like that. So we got that there. And then over here, let's see, we got at the bottom, that's my patch panel. We got the power count at the end. And then I got two main outs and then two auxiliary outs. So if I wanted to run auxiliary speakers or run four speakers wired, I can do that. Thanks to the trusty touch mix, which is right there. So touch mix eight. Um, there's a lot of videos on touch mixes, so I'm not gonna do a video on that. But basically I have a bunch of auxiliary outputs on the touch mix. So I use that to run satellite speakers and stuff like that. Got a Furman power conditioner, a trip light power strip there. And then up here, the next step up, we've got two of the EWD Sennheiser mics. I absolutely love these mics. If you're looking for a new mic system, could not recommend more. Next up above that is an IEM. Just got a single antenna there. So the IEM is what I use these little body packs for. So how that works is you, basically it's, it's just like running a wireless mic. So you take these and you use a cable like this. So it's got headphone jack on one end and then XLR on the other. And uh, you run out of this into your speaker and it creates a wireless speaker system. It's kind of like these little, these are those Sennheiser wireless dongles. Uh, the IEM system just works a million times better than those things do. Uh, up here next, we've got, this is a Galaxy Audio uh, speaker here. So I use this as a monitor, uh, works really well. Thing is screaming loud. We got a wireless charger there for my phone, so I can turn my phone on there. Uh, back in the back deck there, if you can see that, that is an HDMI splitter. Over here, this bad boy, this is an anchor charging block. Just plugs into a power strip and then you can charge a bunch of stuff off of it. And then over here, that is a charger for my wireless mics, which are up here. So I've got two of the Sennheiser EWD handhelds here. They're running that 835 capsule. In this case, I'll see if I can find it. I got it off of Amazon, but I'll try to leave a link to this in the description. It's super nice. It's kind of a hard case, um, but it holds two mics perfectly. I normally just keep that stashed down here like that. Yeah, guys, that's a pretty much pretty much the, the whole walkthrough of the booth. You know, don't hit me up trying to get dimensions for it and all that type of stuff. Uh, you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. I'm not trying to be a dickhead, but you know, I put a lot of time and effort into building this thing and it's designed for me, you know, to be honest with you, I'm 6'5", I'm a bigger guy. So the, the cut list and things like that, this is taller than your normal table. It's a lot taller than like a regular folding table or anything like that, because I built it for somebody my height. But I can tell you how I did it. So what I did is I took the dimensions of the TV first, and then I built the booth based on the dimensions of the TV, because I already had the TV. So I built you know, measurements around that, height, width, all that type of stuff. I knew how tall I wanted it to be. I knew how deep I wanted it to be because I had my other booth. So it's about two foot deep and it's just over three foot tall. So if that helps at all. So it's a little bit higher than countertop height. And uh, then I put the casters on it and that type of stuff. But all right, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed this. Again, links to most of the stuff are gonna be down in the description. Uh, as always, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing, click that like button and click that notification bell so you can get notifications of my upcoming videos. Peace.